Hey everyone, we had some people asking if we could do a Disney Lorcana how to play on TTS kind of video. So uh, here it is. So what is Tabletop Simulator? It is essentially a physics simulator and you can use it to play all kinds of different tabletop games. So I'm gonna show you guys how to play Disney Lorcana on Tabletop Simulator. We're gonna go through the process of installing the mods. I'll show you guys how to build a deck. I'll show you how to manipulate the table, giving you guys some tips and tricks on how to best use the platform. So if you haven't already, go and purchase Tabletop Simulator on Steam. I think it's about $20. It does go on sale fairly frequently, but I think the $20 price is totally worth it. I've put a ton of hours into Tabletop Simulator over the last few years. So definitely recommend just paying the full $20 for it if you can. So now that you've purchased Tabletop Simulator and you've loaded it up, we're at the main menu. And the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is go to settings, go to sound, and turn the main menu volume all the way down. It will drive you insane, so do that. The next tip is that Tabletop Simulator surprisingly requires a lot of resources from your computer. So if you are running on maybe an older device or a laptop or something like that, you may want to turn the quality down to whatever makes sense for, for you. I know that I used to struggle playing this on an old MacBook that I had, so keep that in mind. So on the main menu, you'll see you have two big buttons. One says join, the other one says create. If you wanna join somebody else's game that they've already created, this is where you'd go do that. People are playing all kinds of games on Tabletop Simulator all the time, so feel free to hop in or more likely coordinate games with, with some of your friends. Where we're gonna go is into create. If we click create here, we're gonna open this menu to either create a single player or a multiplayer game or hot seat game. I've actually literally never clicked this before in my life, so I'm pretty confident you won't have to worry about this at the moment. So for now, let's go ahead and click single player. We're gonna take a look at this menu here. So we have a few games that are sort of basic games that come with Tabletop Simulator. We have a DLC row, which will store all of the things that you can sort of purchase within Tabletop Simulator to, to play. Uh, and then we have the workshop, and the workshop is by far the uh, coolest tab and, and area that you can use. And this is where we're gonna download the mods that you'll need to play Disney Lorcana. We also have a save and load section that you can use to quick save stuff, different games if you wanna pause in the middle and come back and, and load them here. We're gonna focus on Workshop right now. So you probably don't have much in here. So you're gonna to wanna to download the mods that are required to play Disney Lorcana. So we're gonna click on Workshop here and we'll click on Browse. And once we click on Browse, it's gonna open up the, the Steam browser within Tabletop Simulator. And if you scroll through here, you know, there's a bunch of different mods that you can download, but we are only interested in Disney Lorcana. So we're going to type that in here and we see a few different options here. The mods that we are using is uh, this excellent Lorcana cards mod by Cabled has all the cards that are currently released and you can go in here and build your deck. And then the gameplay mod that we're using is this Lorcana TCG scripted 1v1 table by 3VO. And this one is also excellent. So if you don't already have these, and you're not already subscribed to them, you're gonna to wanna to click the check mark to, to subscribe, basically. And once you've done that, you can go back to the game itself, hit escape, and you should see them up here in your workshop menu. So once you're here, let's go ahead and load up the Lorcana cards mod so that we can build a deck. All right, so it may take a second for this to load, but once it does, You'll see a table here. You can zoom in and out with the scroll wheel if you have a mouse. I definitely recommend using a mouse with Tabletop Simulator. It makes it much easier. I think on a laptop, if you're playing on a MacBook or something, you could uh, pinch to zoom uh, in and out. And so once we're in here, there's a couple things to know. So up here in the top right is where you can set the rotation angle of cards. So when you're rotating cards, you can go 15, 30, 45, 60, or 90. So you're gonna wanna set it to 90 degrees so that when you do rotate a card, it's gonna rotate only 90 degrees. And, and I'll give you guys some more tips on how to manipulate the cards in a little bit. So now that we are in this deck builder mod, I usually like to delete all the stuff around here and you can kind of just hover over with your mouse and hit the delete key or the backspace as well, though those work but I like having a lot of room when I'm uh, deck building. And so now that we have what we want here, you can go in and we can go ahead and drag cards out to or just lay them out however you wanna look at them. There's a couple other ways that you can interact with these uh, piles. So you could right click and hit search. And if you click search, you'll see a list of all the cards that are in this particular stack. So if you wanted to, you could search and you could pull out the individual cards that you want. 
let's say I'm building a princess deck, and you can put them back in this sort of drop down as well. More often though, I like to use sort of all the space that we have in this mod to sort of lay cards out as if I were building in person. So I would go and I would probably just drag cards however it made sense to me, maybe in cost order, maybe by type, just order the cards so that it makes deck building a little bit easier for me personally. So once once you've decided on like some cards that you want, let's say you really like this uh, new card, the Beast is Mine, um, and to zoom into a card or to, to see sort of a bigger view of it when you're hovering, uh, if you hold the Alt key on your keyboard while you're hovering, it will expand the card art so that you can see what it does. I use this all the time. So let's say we really like this card and we want four copies of this in our deck that we're building. All you have to do is Control or Command C while you're hovering over the card and then Control or Command V, basically wherever your cursor is and it'll make however many you want. You could also take an entire group of stuff by dragging and copy and paste the whole group. So those are a couple quick uh, tips that will make it really easy for you to build decks quickly in Tabletop Simulator. So let's go ahead and delete all this and let's, let's go ahead and build a deck. Okay, so now that we're done building our deck, how do we use it? So I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these cards together and I'm gonna hit the G key on my keyboard to group them. So now that we have a deck that we wanna save, we can right click, click save object, choose what folder we want it in and name it. So we can call this Ruby Steel and we can hit save. And so now if we wanna go find that, we click objects in the menu up here. We go to saved objects into the folder that you want to hold a deck from and you can drag that deck into the field. Now let's say we want to move over to a game table. First, we should go back to the main menu and select the multiplayer game. So let's do that. So we're gonna go back to the main menu. We're gonna create a multiplayer game, whatever server name you want, whatever password you want, uh, whether it's public, only friends can join or only invited people can join the maximum number of players that can be added to that server and you go, can go ahead and create the server. So from here, we're gonna click on the Lorcana TCG scripted 1v1 tabletop. If we click this and we click load, it's gonna load this beautiful table that we can use to play Disney Lorcana. So what we're gonna do here is go into objects, go to save objects, into the folder that you wanna pull the deck from and we're gonna drag the deck into the game. So once we've done that, you know, you can move it over here to the deck area. These right now float around a little bit. So if you wanna lock these down, just hover over and uh, hit the L key on your keyboard. And now you can't accidentally drag them around like I just did with that. So I'm gonna lock this one down as well. This lore counter, I like to move sort of onto my mat so that it's a little bit easier to see. I'll lock that too. Uh, it doesn't prevent you from sort of manipulating the number on the counter. And then let's pretend that we're start setting up to mulligan. So we're gonna determine who's gonna go first. We're gonna grab a die. If there's no die on the table that you're using, you can go into objects, go to components, go to dice, and pick whatever kind of die you want and drag it into the game board. But we do have a die, so I'm gonna delete these and we're gonna roll this. So in order to roll this, you wanna select it and then on your keyboard, hit R. And if you hit R once, it'll kind of just like bounce up and down. So what most people do is kind of just like hit R a bunch of times and then it lands on 12 and you win the game. Then once you determine who goes first or you know, however you want to determine that, we're going to draw our opening hand. And to draw a hand of cards, first you want to make sure that you are selected as one of these sort of dots on the table. Typically when you load in, it will automatically put you into a seat. If you're not, you'll see these dots and you want to click on whichever one is on the, the side of the table that you want to be on. So we're on this side of the table and so my cards are going to automatically sort of go into my hand area when I draw them. And to draw cards from your deck, we're going to shuffle the deck first. That is also the R key. So so if you hit R while hovering over it, I think R stands for randomize in this uh, game. So you randomize your deck. And then if I want to draw seven cards, you could right click and draw here seven times, but that's really annoying. You don't want to do that. Uh, you can just hover over and hit the number seven on your keyboard and it'll draw as many cards as the number it is that you, that you click. So here's our hand of cards that we're looking at. You can see that they're right here, but they're also sort of over here. 
And typically if you're like zoomed in and you can't see the cards back here, this acts as sort of a proxy for grabbing these cards. I typically just sort of pay attention to this area and not this area. So what we're gonna do is say, let's pretend that we don't want this, we don't want this, we don't want this, we don't want this, whatever. In order to flip these, you're gonna select them and hit the F key. And the F key will flip them face up and face down. If you want to, you can actually do that in your hand so you don't show your opponent what you're mulliganing. You can click and select all these. We're gonna flip them. Then we're gonna drag them out into the, the game board. And then we're gonna draw the cards to replace them. and. We'll put these back into our deck. All you have to do is sort of hover over until you see that white outline. Once you do, they'll automatically go back into your deck. And so we'll shuffle again and we're ready to play. So some things to know about manipulating the cards on the table. Let's say I have this Donald Duck out. Let's say I have like some ink out or something. Um, we're gonna flip those over. Let's say I wanna play a Donald Duck. In order to turn these sideways. You can hit either the Q or the E key on your keyboard. So I'm gonna hit E on each of these and we'll drag Donald Duck out. Same thing with the you know face up cards. Q and E sort of rotate it back and forth however you want. Again, remember to set the rotation angle to 90 degrees so that it doesn't take forever for you to turn the card. So one other navigation tip I have is uh, if you wanna move around the table quickly and you don't really wanna use the WASD keys because they're a little slow, uh, you can actually hold down your mouse wheel and sort of just like drag yourself around the table. So that's uh, what I use fairly often. So once you get to this point, I think you guys are pretty pretty good to go here. You can just kind of move cards around the table as uh, it makes sense. And that's about it. So that's about it for this video. If you guys learned something, give us a like, subscribe to the channel. If I forgot anything, definitely let me know down in the comments and maybe I'll make a follow up that explains maybe some more advanced things that you can do with Tabletop Simulator. Join our Discord. You can find games with other people who are trying to play on Tabletop Simulator all throughout the day. And that's it. See you guys next time.